enjoyed it. All right, Ned, thank you so much for joining Life of Chance podcast. I am really excited to have you participate on the pod. Nah, thanks very much for having me, Sam. I know I uh, it was a bit of a delayed start. I we got a bit carried away there, uh, that, you know, when we organised it before. But nah, thanks very much for having me on. Keen to keen to have a bit of a yarn. Yeah, super. So we're going to start with a warm up. Um, nickname. What's nickname. Yeah. Oh, truth. I got a few. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shagger, scrubber, um, shed. Yeah, I get called heaps of things. Um, What's your least favourite? It's, also, it's always a little bit longer than my real name, which is Ned. They yeah. kind of extend it. Um, but, yeah, no, a uh, few different names. Kenneth, um, Kenny Logan. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice, nice. Edgar. Yeah, there's a few different ones. You call me whatever you want. Doesn't what's, what are, like, what's the one that's floating around the team at the moment? Like what's the most common Jeez, I don't know. Uh, what do people call me? I suppose I, I Ned. suppose I get called Shed a bit. I get it's mainly Ned though. I just cop Ned. You know, it's short yeah, enough. It's short enough. That's fair. That's fair. Um, um Gr- yeah, probably, growing probably up. Yeah. yeah. Fair. What were you? What like were you always rugby? Did you always play rugby? What other sports did you play? Uh, no, I, I probably didn't pull. Um, rugby union on till I was about uh 12 yeah um we uh yeah grew up playing soccer uh a bit of tennis a bit of swimming uh athletics there was a little bit of rugby league for school um yeah, yeah we'd have gala days I came down yeah. to Wallara Oval uh as a, a I think yeah I, I would have been 11 actually a grass pitch uh, Wallara but- Oval yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, Canamble had a side and Walgut had a side come down. We actually ended up playing against each other in the final, funnily enough. Ah, uh, waste of a trip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah, no, rugby really, it was a bit of a delayed start too. I kind of went uh, went to school and then a couple of games, uh, got injured, didn't play, and then the following year, same again, and then the following year, same again. So it wasn't until I was 16 that I really strung a few – few games together and um at that stage I was still a five eight outside center. It wasn't until um I was seventeen that um, yeah. I thought well he's too fat and slow to be out in the centers now. So we'll bring him into the back row and yeah, it went from there. Yeah, I definitely want to talk to you about that later on. Um so I'm <laughs> glad you brought it up. Um when did you debut for the Waratahs? Two thousand and seventeen. Um yeah, we uh, sort of bracketed. Um, Tiffy Parler was was carrying a bit of an injury, and um, they were going to give him every chance to play. Yeah, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, he uh, pulled up bits tender on the Thursday, and yeah, I got my got my start against against the Cheaters. Actually, um, first carry on the edge, genuine, just two on one. Just carried straight over the winger, uh, knocked it on. We had a scrum back down on our five metre. And I remember a few blokes looking over going, look, we we know, you know, it's, uh, you were pretty keen on carrying that ball, but but now let's let's settle into it and make sure yeah. we make good decisions because we don't want to be doing that. And I was like, oh. Boy. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> um, Wall of Bees debut. When was that for you? Uh, oh no, sorry, no, that, sorry. The year was two thousand sixteen against yeah. against uh, the yeah. Cheetahs. Your yeah. starting yeah. debut was twenty seventeen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, twenty sixteen was was the first game. Yeah, and twenty seventeen, uh, yeah, Wallabies debut uh, started six down in Melbourne against uh, Fiji. Um, we. Uh, yeah, we're over in Queenstown the week beforehand. Um, yeah, our team was getting announced, and I, you know, I was just at a pub. I uh, didn't have had it on airplane mode, the phone, and and um, because obviously, you know, no sim thing. I hadn't yeah. worked all out really, you know. It was, yeah, um, it's my first tour overseas, and yeah, uh, Rob Horn came up to me actually and said, "Oh, congratulations!" And I thought he was talking about. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I thought he was talking about. And then 
Uh, Jed Holloway came up and said, oh, congrats, mate. You'll enjoy it in there. And I was like, what the <laughs> hell? Uh, yeah. And then it wasn't until I got back to the, the hotel room or hotel, you know, lobby and logged into Wi-Fi and, um, yeah, actually saw Jakey Gordon and I uh, were in the side. So or oh. in, the, in the didn't know we were playing. But, yeah. So Unreal. Uh, and then down at Amy Park. Special family or fly to be there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and one of my brothers, uh, yeah, mum, dad, one of my brothers. And then the following week there was a Scotland game. Um, yeah, and there was a few more yeah. turned up for the second test, I suppose, because it was in Sydney. So, yeah, yeah, special times. Awesome. Okay, outside of rugby, hobbies, passions, You there's a lot, there's a lot there, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, I think it's it's important. I mean, you know, like the the balance of the game. I think, um, you know, when you're at school or you 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 know in culties or you you know you've got uni and stuff that um, sort of balances it out. But when it when it becomes, Ooh. you know, a bit more professional and yeah. you, you're almost feel like you're on all the time. The the art of being able to switch off is, is so important. So, yeah, look, um, I'm from Canamble. I love everything to do with agriculture. And uh, I mean that, like, viticulture, horticulture, you know, everything. I've got mates that work with fruits. Um, so not just cattle. Angus cattle are probably the, the, the thing that, you know, is my biggest interest. But, uh, yeah, and I've got two Border Collie pups, Um uh, Which is ridiculously can... cute, baby. Yeah, like entertain. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So that sort of keeps me a bit busy. Um. But yeah, no. I, I enjoy taking the time away from the game. Um. When 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 you can and when is appropriate. Um, yeah. But yeah. Does the Angus beef passion? Obviously, that's the family. That's family business. Yep. Yep. Is that like, are you in love with it and so interested and engaged in it because it's what you've grown up with, or do you I think so? Like, yeah, it probably. Yeah, that probably gives you the um yeah, the mean to, yeah. to to want to connect to it and things like that. But yeah, like anything, you can you can try it and not like it. I I just tend to every time I go home, I I uh, question whether I you know want to come back. Like I still yeah. love playing on like Saturday or Friday night lights this week against the rebels. But, but, you know, Saturday night lights is, is where it's at. You know, I absolutely froth that, but sometimes when you're, you know, driving seven and a half hours to come back into the smoke and, you know, you've got an eight week preseason, oh, I sit there and there's a bit of head noise and. We Jeez, that car broke down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, no, I've always, always had a pretty big interest in it. Um, you know, the operations of it. And also how the different people do different stuff, you know, the different breeds in the north. Um, you know, I had a sister that went up there and was up up north for two years, mucking around, you know, steer wrestling and um, bucking out bloody wild horses oh. and stuff. And Yeah, like it just operations uh, different there in comparison to the south as well. And so, yeah, um, but, it, you know, it's definitely something that, I'll always have something to do with. I think um, maybe not in the the scale we have at at, at home, but um, yeah, maybe a little bit further inland. Um, my girlfriend's, you know, got her own passions and things like that. So, uh, but always have something to do. With the home. Deep country, mm -hmm. but what? So, what's then the horse ride? Like, there's there's yeah. a bit of connection in with horses. There is that because yeah. that's the. I grew up. I, yeah, look, I. I grew up, you know, on the back of a horse. So my mum uh, loves horses. So I can remember being at, you know, pony camps in Walgett and uh, in Canamble and mucking around on a horse at Jim Carners and things like that and always loved it. I came away to school and it was a little bit um, harder to to have your horse just in your back paddock. Um, but, yeah, I uh, sort of stayed with it a little bit and then I um, – when I left school, it was kind of, I just always thought, oh, I'll just stay at home. But, but you know, my old man said, oh, well, you know, if you like playing footy, 
you don't want to get to a stage when you're sort of 45 and you think, oh, what if you had he tried that? Would it, wonder what would have happened or yeah. So he just said, you know, give yourself a, a couple of years at it and just see how you're poking along. Um, and I'll never forget that conversation because I feel like it was such a um, like a door open, you know, kind of feeling. Like it, the old man's never, never ever pushed me to come home. Whenever I've got two younger brothers and a younger sister, and he's never been like that. Um, even though I know, I think he would be just ecstatic if if you know we did. Um, so sometimes that makes it a little bit hard to like, you know, you're almost you're here and you're going on Saturday to Saturday and things are, you know, but then you look at home and it might be dry and your old man's feeding cattle. And like, you, I definitely have struggled in the past where that's, uh, or, and still struggle. It, 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 that grinds away at you because you're just not sure whether you're doing, doing the right thing. Um, but so I, when I, when I left um, home to come to Sydney, I just thought I need something that, that is a bit, um, you know, aligned with, with the yeah. bush a bit. So, yeah, I, I started working in the stables on Barrel Street for, for Gay Waterhouses, um, or, or some of the horses, and, yeah, started mucking out stables there, which I loved. I got to see some amazing uh, horses and, you know, young fillies and colts that were just sort of coming through, and now you, you see them, you know, in years yeah. gone by. They're winning group ones and, you know, I was sitting there hardly patting him and things like that, which was which was pretty neat. But yeah, I uh I ended up doing a fair bit um there and then doing the twenties thing on the side. So it was well not on the side, it was like yeah. a three AM start, eight thirty uh, AM finish, and then I'd go back to uni and sleep for a few hours, do a bit of uni, and then go to training of an afternoon three thirty. So um yeah, it was like that for about a year and then the footage sort of started. It just got a bit hard to manage, but uh, no, I ended up leading a few of a few pretty cool horses to the track, and um, you know, grooming them and strapping them up and stuff like that. So that always that's that's where the the love has has always been there. And then I still am sort of staying involved with with racing, and actually just got back to Canamble, um a couple of weeks ago for the for the championships day out there. They've got. Racing New South Wales is such a good initiative. They've picked a few country um, jockey clubs and they're running races. And then the the horse that comes first and seconds ends up coming down here on Championships Day. One, I think it's April six, I think, and they run at Randwick in a race. Um, Special. So yeah, fun. yeah, good it's cool. It's a good day. It's a good day. I love that. I love how much you're like you light up when you're talking about all of that but then also like you also have the passion clearly for the rugby that you're doing like it's too hard yeah. to do it and not enjoy it and love it but to be able to balance and still have a genuine connection with home is special it's really special yeah yeah it is it is it's definitely helped me yeah um i don't want to I'll ask the question. I hope it's not a, a stereotype answer, but it might be. Uh, <laughs> favorite music, music or song at the moment that you're listening to? Is Ooh, it country music? I actually got a teaser the other day um, by Morgan Wallen and um, Post Malone. It was yes. like a little, and I was like, this sounds gun. Yeah. Um, so no, I'm of a, yeah, but mixed bag. Like I'll... Um, I don't know, a few concerts I've gone. Like I've been to Post Malone, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, uh, well, yeah, like seen Luke Coombs, um, Kip Moore. So, but then, you know, I'll get around like, I know everyone's sort of getting around, but Fred again, 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 again. Yeah. You know, I got around him. Um, yeah. you know, is there a in. song at the moment on your Spotify playlist that you're like, this is what I start with? Like, what's that song? Oh, truth. Um Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Pour some sugar on me by Def Leppard's getting a bit of a run. Uh, <laughs> I like it. the I like some of the clay, like you know the old school yeah. stuff. As well, um, love it. Yeah, I like a bit of everything. Um, and if you could be any animal, what would you be and why? Eagle. Why? Fly. I just want to fly real bad. Um, yeah. I've uh, some of the best views I've had are from heights. Um, I love being up high. Uh, Says the tall man. 
spends his life up higher. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's true. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I just always thought flying would be the go. Um, yeah, I like that. That was the location where you see eagles as well as kind of cool. Like it's just, um, yeah, just a bird in general, really. I Willy Wagtail is probably my favorite bird, and a king parrot. Um, yeah, we have like a lot of birds around home and stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah, no, a bird of, of, of some sort, I think. Rate it, rate it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, growing up, you've sort of dabbled into how you got into footy, but was it just like it was the local Canamble under 11s is where you kicked off your first footy? like union experience. How I'm not too sure she just got inside, but she's here. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it was all just, you know, and this probably does sound a bit cliched. My mates were playing it. Um, we, you know, we'd played soccer for a little while and thought, oh, well, you know, we, well, should we go and play a bit of footy and rugby? And we just all kind of went over together and um, it's what, Oh, we all started the game, right? Just like running around and and tackling and the kicking. And I can remember, you know, Canamble would be playing someone at the local oval and you'd just be busting to be ball boy. And even if you weren't, you'd be running around the dead ball line to try and, you know, catch the ball that they were, can, you know, can, uh, trying to catch the ball that had just been converted or missed. And um, so it was just a good time. And I think, um, yeah, trying to still... Um, being in love with with that feeling is 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 what you need to remind yourself every so often of that because it, sometimes it can get lost. So um, yeah, I just I just enjoyed everything about about footy, not obviously playing, but everything just around it was was just good fun. Yeah, special. So you went to Joey's in year seven, right? Yep, Joey's. Yeah. What like was the Joey's move to the city? for like was it rugby school opportunity was it just a really good boarding school that was going to look after you whilst you're in Sydney like why do you know why Joey's was the choice um probably a question for mum and dad I think I think all you know everything you said they you know the the opportunity to, to come down to, to Sydney and board and meet new people and um you know the sport was obviously a big one the academia like it, it it sort of was just when my old man went there um okay but places okay. change you know over time so yeah look mum and dad I suppose thought um I was a bit of a fit for the place and um yeah they obviously trusted the the men that were going to look after us and things like that so um yeah look I loved my time there it was it was, you know, I'm just living with my best mates uh, for six years. And I think, you know, we're 11 years post now or 12 years out and, um, you know, we're going to weddings and stuff together now. And, you know, often it's it's the groomsmen are just all from from the same year group. We've just all kept in contact. And, uh, no, it's a, it's, a spe- it's, it's a special place to me. I can understand some for some others sometimes it wasn't or it's not a good fit for – but oh, I absolutely loved my time there. Um, yeah. Yeah, special. What when you so you touched on it before the center converting into an eight yeah. happened yeah, through yeah. high school. So uh, I got out of the boat. I got out of a, a rowing boat. Um, just you know, straight into the uh, year eleven. I think I started in the fourths. Um, so yeah, someone got. Got injured in the thirds. I played inside, and yeah, the uh, second fifteen coach Tim Anderson, who's who I still talk to often, and he's a, he's one of the greats. He he said, "Look, have you ever thought about going to the forwards?" And I'd I'd been busting to want to go into the forwards for years, just because um, some people, you know, apples don't fall far from the trees, and I'm sound and acting, and you know, kind of aspire to you know just be yeah. half the man my old man is, and um yeah he was a breakaway lock and yeah so when he said would you come in and I thought you know bloody oath I've got no idea what I'm doing and he just said just just get stuck in I was playing six and he said just hit hit things and just go for it and um yeah that's where I stayed thankfully because 
I don't reckon I can match it out in the bloody back there now. I can't, like, from a size perspective, were you always a tall kid? Always relatively tall, but I've not a lot of weight. Um, like, I was a bit of a, like, I did a lot of high jump um, and athletic. stuff. So I, um, yeah, I would. I, I reckon I've gotten slower just with whacking a few kegs on, but um, worth yeah, it. I was always re- I was always relatively tall, not not the tallest by any stretch. Still, you know, not the tallest now. So, um, but yeah, it the the um, the girth and the the, the 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 sort of circumference around the chest and stuff is what blew out after school a little bit. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So. When you, when did you realize that you wanted to make it? Like, when did you think rugby, I'm good at it. I want to play for my country. Or like, was that an aspiration through school? How does that? That's an interesting like, one because I, um, my old man used to say two things to us when we used to get on the bus. He just used to say, try your artist uh, and stick up for one another. And like that, cause we always, you know, and, I suppose um, rugby kind of or sport in general just gives you that, particularly team sports, like you want to stick up and um, for, your, for your teammates, but you also just want to try your best. And I think, yeah, rugby was one that, um, like I said, I just liked, you know, the values behind the people that played and um, enjoyed enjoyed the game, you know, off the, off the field, what, what came with it. And so the on-field stuff, you know, I, I I just enjoyed competing and um and trying my best and knew knew who I was, you know, playing for and why I was I was doing what I was doing. And I just remember seeing um it was three or four Tars players at the time walk out when we were at Moore Park, walk out and jump in their vehicles and uh, as I was going in on a just a regular training session for a twenties. Um, session, I remember thinking, geez, that that actually looks all right. That, like, you you know, because <laughs> you yeah. come in and train and perform, and and you just constantly trying to, you know, sort of get better the whole time. Like, I, I don't know, it was just a realization. I was like, no, no, this is this is this is the go. Of this, um, but it, it all sort of came from, well, if you're gonna have a go at something, you might as well, you know, get stuck into it, otherwise you know, a waste of time. So, um, yeah, I, I suppose it all happened probably a bit early for me as well, particularly the international stuff. Like it was a bit of a timing thing and, um, yeah, I got kind of put in there and um, was potentially before I was ready, um, but it, it just got me, you know, ready a bit sooner. And, um, yeah, I just, just kept, you know, giving my all. So, that's what I'm still doing now, I guess. Um, but yeah. So was that like a high school time, or like a? Was that when you were doing the under twenties? No, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was yeah, well after. It was sort of might have been. Yeah, it might have been. I left school 2013. It's probably yeah, probably some somewhere along 2014, start of 2015. I, yeah, just realised that it that it, it you know make a career out of it and yeah. Uh, yeah. I definitely had a similar experience and funnily, well, not funnily enough, it was definitely boys leaving training at, at the Waratahs. And I was like, that just looks like that's something I want to do. I want to make it mm. my full-time thing at some stage. I don't know if it's a possibility, but like that's like seeing people in the environment. And I couldn't even tell you which three boys it was or five boys or two. It was just like knowing that there were people doing something that you suddenly were like, oh, that's a life, that is that is an option. That mm, would be mm. freaking cool to be able to be like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So th- there is, it's funny how those moments can really influence your life, even though they, like, they didn't say anything to you, they didn't have a yarn and tell you how great their life was. Um, mm. That just that, like, the influence of other people around you is really. Uh, life-changing I suppose can be yeah right. no, definitely so 
role models. You mentioned that you wanted to, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree and you want to be like your dad and he was obviously a forward. Were there other people other than your dad that you looked up to in the rugby world or players that you were like, I want to be like him? It probably came a little bit later because you you like how someone plays the game. Um, yeah, I, I've always like on field. You obviously look at players off field. It's it's just always been been mum and dad, I suppose. Um, and people come across like I've enough to have a good relationship with my brothers and sisters, and you know I still look at them for a bit of inspiration too. But but yeah, on field, I think you picked certain um, things of certain players that you, you think you might be able to emulate or you try to. Um, yeah, I'm constantly like looking at old footage or current footage or um, I try and go and see blokes that, um, you know, have played a high level of footy and just pick their brain around probably more the, um, the dynamic between, you know, players and group and conversations after, you know, something goes wrong on the field and what that used to look like. And because the game's changed so much, so what might have happened, you know, at a 2003 World Cup or an 07 World Cup, you, you it just wouldn't work now, you know, yeah. like the game's forever evolving. So, um, yeah, so there's there's definitely a few people I've I, sort of keep in contact and bounce ideas off and things like that. But um, no no real highlight um, of someone that I just looked up to. And, you know, Todd Eyed Kefu was, was probably the the one that um, I just remember distinctly as a kid, you know, watching Bledisloes and stuff with a few other um, little young rugrats around Canemo where we'd be just, yeah, pestering um, everyone in someone's house, but yeah, I I um, have since met met Todd I, and he's he's a lovely man, and um, you know, an incredible role model for so many people. So he's probably one. Do you ever reflect that you are probably like a Todd I to so many young boys and girls now? Like, do you ever have like that step back moment and go like, I I have the ability to influence people and like, just think about how cool that is. Not like, not really. I think I, I, I more look at it as a responsibility. Am I, um, you know, there's so many young kids that, that come to games and um, something that I've found great satisfaction from probably a more selfish point of view is, is seeing young kids enjoy their footy because it just makes me feel good because I remember being that young kid. Um, so I don't I don't really ever step back and think, oh, you know, I can have an impact here. But I think we've all got a responsibility that that because of the position we are in, we that sort of is put on us. Um, and ignoring young kids or or um, just saying something as as little as thanks for coming to the game and giving them you know a pat on the on, on the back of the shoulder like they're, they're in rugby for life um, and I think that that definitely um you know I I, I hold that sort of responsibility you know it, it's it's important um but yeah I, I look I love coaching young kids I'm I'm always um doing stuff on the side you know around this sort of area in Ramwick and uh, when I get home, I went to Armadale not too long ago. Uh, there were about 400 kids out there running around just frothing their footy. So, yeah, it, it's just important and I think it's a responsibility of, of you know, particularly rugby union players to make sure that they're, they're, uh, they're just doing, you know, small things often to, to keep kids sort of engaged with the game. Yeah, I really rate that. Like I was going to say you... Like it's noticeable that you are always one of the last people in the sheds after a game because you are giving the supporters that attention. And I think it's a even on like a community event, if you you know, if I'm at a one of those tri rugby's or any of those community events mm -hmm. that players go to, I always notice how much like personal touch you give to the kids and you're actually 
spend the time talking to them. And it might be exactly that, like a pat on the head, but it, I see how much impact, like the, the, the kids follow you around, like, <laughs> like your shit don't smell, like they love it. And I, I think it's, I think it's such a valuable part of the game because we all know that community rugby's, you know, well, high, high performance rugby is nothing without the community because firstly, we need people watching the game. Secondly, we want to have people loving to play it and aspiring to be where you are. And I, 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 I don't know if I feel like it's a responsibility, but then I suppose that it is a responsibility. It's just not a, um, it's not a chore. It's just, it is your like it's your corporate social responsibility. It's that that part of the game that isn't really expected, but when you do it, it is so appreciated, and I think it pays in dividends to the way the community views rugby union. So I suppose there's a little pat on the back there from me. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, you talked about your journey um to Wallabies, and obviously. Uh, well, you said that you think that you may have got that opportunity earlier than you were ready for. The journey continued through that period of like debuting for Wallabies. Then you went over to Japan. Um, was that choice like a, I need to just go and freshen up and move away? What like, yeah, what, what drove the idea yeah. of going offshore? Yeah, no, I suppose, um, yeah, played, oh, I don't know, it was sort of like 20-odd tests. Um, then COVID hit, um, sort of steadied the ship a little bit, and I don't know, I I, I was just really missing home, um, that part of my life, and I just sort of, I, you know, maybe I just do need a break, or what's that look like? And anyway, the, the opportunity in Japan... Um, was was you know six months on and six months off and that six months off I I I knew I was going to spend time at home so that's that's where it all started um and then we hardly played any footy in that that first year yeah. so I I re-signed for another um and yeah we played a little bit more footy that following year and then I came back uh, to join the Tars uh 2022 um yeah, and and Renz was still coach and uh, ended up on the spring tour at the back end of that year. So, um, yeah, look, it was just part of my life where I was like, right, I've been in the same system for a long time. Um, was really missing. I just thought, no, I I I need this, and um, yeah, I really think I've benefited from it. It's definitely put put you know years in the legs. Um, you know, having that time at home and being away and then coming back. So, yeah. What was, so it was, um, was it Karita Water Gush? Is that the name? Yeah. Water Gush, Akashima. Um, yeah, we uh, won a few games, lost a few games, sort of I had two really good mates over there, Andrew Deegan and Tom English. And um, look, it was just, I was in Tokyo. It was such a great time. And the Japanese boys were we're unreal lads. They're they're good fun, uh, and the culture, the food, everything about the place. I just frothed. So, uh, and I'm pretty thankful that it's interesting. Rugby just it takes you, even if you're here in Australia playing, it can take you around the world. Um, but I think the opportunity to to live somewhere and, and and play the same game, you know, between two posts, and it's just uh, it's a it's a real real grab and a real uh, opportunity for for people to go and sort of explore and um, maybe step out of their comfort zone if they need to and things like that. So it's it's a pretty special part of the game, I reckon. Yeah, I completely agree. Doing Having just done my little stint in Japan as well, I just yeah. I learned so much about myself, about travel, about life over there, communicating in different language. Mm -hmm. There were just so many great takeaways and I have such fond memories and you speaking just then, you can tell there are some pretty good memories of, of Japan. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Good fun. So I feel like you've talked about a few times where you've like taken a chance and this podcast is all, well, I say all about taking chances. We're just getting yeah. to chances now, 
But when, like, have you got some key things or times in your life where you've been like, I took a chance and it paid off? Like, I think Japan sounds like one of those um, in terms of life and longevity for rugby, but not just rugby wise, like they don't have to be rugby examples, but are there any times where you've been like, yeah, I, I took a, a leap of faith and and it it worked? Yeah. Yep. No, for sure. I've also got times where I've taken that chance and it hasn't come off, but that's that's all right as well because they're all learnings, right? So uh, I think the chance or well, the, the opportunity to come down and play footy in Sydney when I was a young kid, um, look, it ended, it ended up paying off. And some some do that and it doesn't pay off, but it's um, it's definitely something. I think that's probably why I hold the conversation with my old man about go down and just try it and see what happens. Just It just resonates with me so much. Um, yeah, sometimes I get a bit emotional about it, actually. Oh. But, uh, yeah, and then... I guess the the opportunity or the chance to go overseas was was one that paid off as well. I um just frothed my time over there. Um but then the, the chance to come back, um, and the big one about that was was to, you know, to earn a spot again back in the, the Waratah side and then hopefully pull on the, the gold jersey again and, and that sort of paid off as well, I suppose. I I um you know, I ended up um, being able to play the the final sort of games of the Tars season and and that sort of went on to pulling the, the yellow jersey back on and um but a big reason on on coming back was I I really wanted to represent Australia in a World Cup and um that was probably you know although it was it was I suppose on track it it um sort of derailed you know the start of twenty. 23 um wasn't playing my best footy and things like that and and I didn't end up going to France um you know there was a bit of a um changing of the guards in terms of coaching and things like that um but yeah so so I suppose that's the opportunity to come back and the chance to be able to go to a world cup I I fell short um but you know you you take the goods with the bads, I suppose. And I still, I don't regret coming back because it's, it's still just been a great time being back here and, and being able to pull on the blue jerseys, something where the novelty hasn't, hasn't worn off and won't ever wear off. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, but yeah, there's, there's taking, taking chances or, or putting yourself out there or being vulnerable in situations is um, where I reckon you get the most out of, out of you know if it does work like you you if every if it's easy and and you and you get it done it 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 still feels good but it's it's when you um you know it's a real hard decision or or you're trying really hard at something and and it pays off that's where the that's where the cream of the crop is like that's where the honey is and um yeah you can fall short, fall short yeah that's that's where you the satisfaction you can you can get from from as an individual, but also as a group when you achieve something like that, um, yeah, it's it's pretty special. Two questions from that. Firstly, are you going to push for another four years? <laughs> the, the knees, the knees. Oh, the knees are screaming, just saying that. Uh, oh, look, I uh, like I said, I've got you know, aspirations to, to continue playing him. And, um, yeah, whoever, whoever will have me, um, I, I, hopefully I'm about, um, but yeah. I think, I think after I get you, you sort of, you sit back and you think, well, actually what you might do after rugby, it can still give you the satisfaction that, that rugby has. And there's nothing to say that it won't go as well. Um, you know, might have to change a few times, but it, it, um, yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens. And then my second thing was, so as much as obviously you wanted to go to a World Cup, you ended up over in the UK on a barbarian yeah. tour, right? So you've now played for another incredibly reputable team. Um, I'm not going to ask about the experience because we don't have time for that now. But, like, do you see that positive side of, the opportunity as well or was it really hard to take because you still 
were so close but so far away from what you really wanted out of last year? Yeah, it was a tricky one because um, that group of players that were over there, there were a few in that in that um, same kind of basket, and you you kind of almost going on that trip to hope to be available, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think we actually feel we sat down and said, look, we can, you know, you can kick stones here, but then you miss the opportunity of, of like you said, to be playing for an incredible uh, rugby team that has so much history and. Um. Yeah. So I I ended up just taking it for for the you know getting back to remind myself just how great the game was and being under lights on a Saturday and just loving it and and thinking about the kid that was catching balls behind dead ball lines in Canberra. He just wouldn't have dreamed to be to yeah. be playing. Um. You know the Harlequins. You know in Twickenham, like it. You just think this this is this is or at the stoop. But it, you know it just. Uh, those those they're special um, special times and yeah had a lot of had a lot of good mates in that tour and um, yeah look it was it was a time that was that was difficult but but also um, yeah good fun in terms of life after rugby no we're wrapping up but let's just see what we can get out of you here you've got a science degree you've sorted yourself out with some um, sort of, you, I mean, you've got a family business that you're connected with. Mm. What, like, you just talked about how, like, you know, even if the next four years don't end up being rugby, there's still other ways of fulfilling life. Like, have you got a plan or is it just ride this wave right now, see where it takes you and deal with it afterwards? There's a bit of that, but there's also, um, you know, the... Um, the the foresight to be like, look, at, at rugby's not going to last forever. So yeah, bit of uni, a um, little bit of work experience here and there, you know, keeping interests alive with with cattle and ag and um, property and you know sales and things like that. So um, I think you like I said, you 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 got to dip in a hundred percent. So that's but there's it's the priority at the moment, footy. But um, I'm definitely not you know. Um, unaware that it that it's it's short term, uh, and you got to be sort of half ready for other things. Thanks, Ned. I'll wrap you up there. It's been amazing. I really appreciate your time. Um, I know you are not an easy man to get a hold of. <laughs> man. Um, no, I really do appreciate your time, and thank you for coming on Life of Chance podcast. Thanks very much for having me. Anytime. Good on you.